Welcome to the N1I Electronics blog. I know it's been a couple weeks since I did my last post, but I've been actually working on a uh, project of mine. Ever since the NSTAR issue, um, I actually went out and got a used generator. And here it is, right here. Uh, I had to do a little bit of uh, elbow work, uh, but it was mechanically sound, so it was just cleaning it up and basically getting it running. So. Uh, this is a Generac wheel horse, 5,500 watt, uh, 8,500 watt peak, and uh, overall it's a good uh, generator. I was really impressed with the specs when I when uh, I got it. I actually posted a uh, want ad on Craigslist, and someone came up with this one right here. It was uh, used in uh, construction sites, so. Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, this differs from other generators, that the tank is removable. Um, the gentleman who had it before me um, had it non-removable. He had uh, bolts here holding it down. This is this quarter inch bolts. And a, a fuel line that didn't have any shut off or anything. Um, and that's the thing, you, ha you have to have a shut off on this or uh, the gas will start leaking out. Uh, the carburetor where the, where the ball is, uh, where the float, the ball float is. And uh, when I transported it home, that's what happened, and it actually leaked out the uh, the air filter. Quite a bit of uh, gasoline, probably about a half a cup or so, came out. Um, so here's some of the stuff that I redid on the generator. Uh, first off was I replaced the uh, removable hardware for the tank to make it removable again. Uh, why didn't make it removable? Uh, if the generator is hot, you can remove it and gas it up in a safe location away from the hot exhaust and the hot engine. So um, I looked online and I saw the replacement bolts for these were $3 a piece. So basically I just went to the hardware store. Uh, I got a carriage bolt, I got a wing nut, and a stop nut. And this is just fuel line I had left over, a quarter inch fuel line, and another stop nut, and a big fender washer. And it comes right off. And I just put the fuel line on there, something to grab onto. Uh, you don't have to have that on there. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, what I'm going to do is drill a small hole and attach uh, some sort of wire or rope so I don't lose the washer. Uh, that's going to be my next project on this. Um, the other thing is uh, oil. I had to replace the oil. Oil was pretty pretty bad. Um, so down along the other side here uh, there's your oil fill. Um, and on the bottom of the generator there's uh, some oil plugs. Uh, the nice thing that, gener that uh, Briggs & Stratton did with this generator is they have multiple oil plugs located along the sides and along the back of the bottom so this thing could be mounted in any direction and you can have access to the oil pan. Uh, the other problem with this was that the uh, the welds broke in the frame. It looked like it was carried a lot in stairs and some vibration issues. So the welds broke right along where the tank is here and also on the bottom there. So I just put in some carriage bolts, some stop nuts and same way up here, carriage bolt stop nuts bolted it through. I might have to do that to the other side in the future or I can just uh, weld it together later on but uh, for a solution right now I just bolt it together it's fine and uh, it also had some sort of cross member here for stability so I added that as well this is just regular piece of uh, steel that I painted up and put a couple u-bolts in there so the wheel will uh, ride straight instead of wobbling back and forth and hitting the frame and that's what it was doing before it kind of worked but you know uh, I made it a little bit better uh, right here is where all the new hardware is in the filter uh, I got all this stuff on Amazon 
Uh, I got the replacement on off that came with the bushing and this thing just pushes right in. It takes quite a bit of force. I had to actually use a hammer to push it in. Uh, some quarter inch fuel line and this I couldn't believe this. This is a quick disconnect for the gasoline. Uh, Generac wanted $20 a side on this thing, so $40 altogether. I went online and found an ATV dealership that sold these for $7 a piece. And uh, you just push it, and yeah, he, your fuel line disconnects, and then you can take out the fuel tank. Now, these disconnects are pretty interesting, is that when you disconnect them, um, it actually stops the gas flow. So, uh, if you forget that the um, on-off on valve is actually on, it won't matter, because it'll actually stop. They need to be pushed together in order for the gas to flow, which is a nice little feature. Uh, the other thing I did was I changed the plug. I changed the plug over here to a uh, Bosch plug. It starts with one pull now. Uh, it took several pulls before, but uh, I looked in there. I, I, I did a pressure test. I got about 90 PSI on the uh, pressure test. I looked in there with a bore scope, and there's no scoring, there's no scorching, so mechanically it was fine in the engine. Um, here's your on-off switch, your kill switch. Uh, right up here, I actually replaced this hardware and this pin. Uh, the pin I had there originally was metric, so I had to drill it out uh, for a 3 8 inch pin. And right here is this parachute cord, so you don't lose the pin. And that came with the original. Uh, I actually had some sort of cord there. Uh, the nice thing about this too is it has a uh, fuel gauge in the tank. I got to replace this in the future because the uh, the plastic was all cut up and, cl and clouded, so uh, this is like 20 bucks on eBay. <clears throat> so that's one of the things in the future. No big deal right now, uh, but uh, right here is your uh, throttle, choke, um, and then run. And down here, let's see if I can get a shot of it. Uh, the spring was a little bit loose, so I took this whole thing apart in the carburetor push this little spring in so it has a nice click to it before it was just floating there. So uh, fix that up. Right here is your uh, regulator for the, uh, the RPM so if you have more of a load uh, this thing will twist and increase the RPM so uh, that's the mechanical regulator for it. Uh, your pull start And uh, I got to clean up the wheels a little bit, but it weighs about a couple hundred pounds, which isn't too bad. Uh, overhead valve, um, and I checked out the exhaust. The exhaust is okay. I'm going to modify the exhaust. I'm actually going to bolt on a motorcycle uh, exhaust pipe to make this thing a little bit quieter. It's it is pretty loud, and. Uh, Usually most Generacs are pretty loud. I've had them in the past and and uh, it's it's a lot louder than a uh, typical Honda inverter one. Now let me show you the chassis underneath. So what I use is a jack stand for this, this moving forward. The whole thing moves up. There we go. And uh, here's underneath. So this was completely filthy. I cleaned it down with uh, Super Clean I got at Walmart. And uh, here's the uh, oil plugs I was telling you about. So you remove this to change out the oil. You can see there's the heat sink. Uh, you have uh, an oil outlet here, here, and on this side. Uh, now the sides I can't really get to, but it's nice that they're there because this engine is in mounts and other applications too, so you might not be able to get at the back one but one of on the side ones so that's why they did that there so you can pretty much mount it in any direction and still have access to the uh, the oil uh, plug so that's pretty much it so this was actually after the end star debacle that we had we had four and a half days without power so the next thing uh, I'm gonna do is wire up the electrical panel 
and backfeed it. Uh, the only thing with backfeeding it is that you got to be careful uh, uh, throwing the main. There is a kit, a retrofit kit available, which I'm going to show you guys uh, to use. So it, there's a safety interlock. Uh, so if you backfeed your panel, um, Square D actually does make a safety interlock for that. So you don't accidentally have your main breaker on uh, when you're backfeeding uh, a circuit. So uh, I'm going to research that, guy, that for you and send you the link. Uh, there's a bunch of those safety analogs depending on the panel that you have. Uh, I have a Square D home light. So it's like 50 bucks. It's just a piece of metal that mounts in there. It's pretty cool uh, how they did it. Um, you have to use a certain breaker position to back feed, but I've already taken care of that last year. So it's no big deal. I'll just wire in an outlet outside for this thing and uh, back feed the panel and that's it so as for fuel consumption I don't know right now um, I'm gonna be running this thing over the weekend and find out how much fuel uh, it consumes with an hour with a load so that's it any questions just email me uh, most of these parts, I love the Briggs & Stratton. I've worked with Briggs & Stratton for a long time, and most of the stuff is you can get online. It's great. Uh, this is actually the second version of this generator, and they've made, I believe, like four different versions. Um, so this is version two. All right, see you later.